All right, good morning, everyone. We've got a nice, nice little group today. Okay, uh, we. Uh, I should good morning. Uh, let me flip the stream just so you can see see the people here. Uh, we are going to start week three of the Evo twenty twenty two course, and this week's all about games. So um, we're going to get our thinking hats on and try to, you know vomit out as many game genres and types and platforms as possible just just to get the full spectrum of, of games and play out there on the uh the google documents so yeah literally vomiting them out here we go um the llp course document i'll grab a link to it here and i'll throw it into discord so i'll throw it into general we will Fill in right. Um, back to that. Look at you guys. Okay. Right, so the plan for today, uh, week three, let's have a look together. I'll, I'll zoom in here, 150, something like that. Okay. Hello. Oh, hey, Rose, good morning. Hello. Are you feeling better? You said you, your booster knocked you about a bit. Yeah, but I'm I'm fine now, thank you. Good, good to hear. <laughs> Only a couple of days. <laughs> good to hear. So we're looking at this week, week number three, all about games and play. And it says, what games or playful activities could we use in our teaching? So, first of all, please refresh your memories. What games do you know? Remember, it needn't be a digital game. There are a whole world of board, card, folk, and playground games. And um, I wanted to show this uh, this tweet thread. So, I think this is pretty pretty interesting. <laughs> I mean, it just goes to show that the one one super... Uh, deep end of the spectrum in terms of, uh, of of games and play. Can you see this? Yeah. Okay. So th these guys are flicking their shoes to see who can get it closest to the edge, and of course someone throws it over. Right. This is play. It's very playful. Uh, this whole thread just keeps going. Um, just crazy games and play that you can do by yourself this guy's building lego without opening the package <laughs> what else have we got day one of seeing how loud i can be on zoom without looking any different so uh, you need the sound for this one but the, the guy's basically shouting his loudest um, without moving his face to freak people out it's game it's playful uh Okay, so hitting a a plunger off a trampoline to try and get it to stick to the top of a chair. Why not? <laughs> uh, this is um, she's she's got a golden retriever on a dog leash and she's holding a glass of red wine and the dog's pulling and she's trying not to spill the wine. So this is the game basically. Can you not spill the wine? Well, the dog's falling. <laughs> and this thread just keeps on going. Um, what's this? Oh, that's right. They, they all message their friends um, at the same time and they see who can get the re a reply the quickest. And the person that gets the reply the quickest is the winner. So it's like, hey, what's up? And then that person won because their friend replied the quickest. Uh, I don't know what that one is. Uh, this one is spin the bottle, but if it lands on you, you get eggs thrown at you. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, this just keeps on going. Uh, this is another one, spin the bottle, but you get uh, a paintball gun shot at you. Oh, uh, this one, rolling sand down, see if it can fall in, like, to make a sand ball, roll it down um, into a hole, but it breaks, like, over and over and over again. So, you know, it's, how many times does he do it until the ball actually goes in the hole without breaking? 
yeah, I mean, <clears throat> these are all just kind of weird folk games. Look, there's a skipping one. <laughs> it's pretty hardcore skipping. Um, let me think. Was there any other really interesting ones? Well, actually, they're all really... Oh, this is a Japanese thing. This is uh, sumo, but you're not allowed to move your feet. Ah. If you're interested, uh, have a look later. Um, there's just so many of these uh, these weird folk games um, that people that this this guy uh, Danny Hawk has c collated into a single uh, Twitter thread. It might give you some ideas of uh, <laughs> games that you can play in the classroom. I particularly like the Golden Retriever and Red Wine one. <laughs> All right, so. From that end of the spectrum, all the way to very structured, playful things like um, uh, games, of course, and uh, digital games, MMOs, things like that. The first activity today is we're going to just try and make a list of, of different games and things that we can play. So again, we talked about this, this ludic approach, which uh, was mentioned in a paper by Lotherington and Jensen. And they talk about encouraging students to do things like identity work, like think taking on new identities or consider their own identity as a form of play, improvisation and drama, learning from failure. So allow students to fail and um, learn from that. And, and again, that's very playful. That's I mean, you can think of Mario, the, the game where you, you, you game over and you keep playing. I mean, I was just talking about the game that I've been playing recently where it's taken over 200, 300 attempts to beat a single level. You know, it's um, it's very common in, in games and, and, and play to, to fail. So, you know, allowing allowing space for this. Problem solving, again, games, and then story creation. like So actually narrative and creating the games and things like that. And then from a, a paper of ours, me, Jonathan, and um, Fred, Fred Poole, who's not, not in the evo but we we wrote a paper and we tried to think about other things that could be included in uh ludic under the ludic banner so debates of course digital games uh drama language play humor jokes poems riddles live action role playing games if anybody has done this please let us know i'd love to uh publish something on larps make believe playful worksheets themselves you know maybe it's a worksheet which is actually you know folded in half and you have to rip it in two to put it back together again to figure out what's going on that kind of playful stuff activities puzzles simulations storytelling tabletop games and traditional games and folk games which we just saw like playground games and stuff like this in fact playground games is a really interesting one and it's slightly aside but i've read a paper about playground games where it's an introduction to other countries cultures as well because you know each culture actually you'll find that they have um very similar playground games but then different play playground games as well i mean if we take the the squid game which is blowing up right now um on netflix they have that the game where the first episode, I think, is where the the huge robot girl turns around and watches people if they're they're running. Let's, let's just riff on this a little bit. But in Japan, this game, it's it's there's a daruma. It says daruma. The 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 daruma fell over, and that's the name of the game. So it has this like daruma sanga koron da, and at the end of the sentence, if you're not standing still, you get caught out. In England, now I don't know America or Russia or Carlos, where are you from? I'm from Brazil. Brazil. I don't know the Brazilian context. Um, I'm, I'm just talking to the people that I can see. But um, in the UK, the same game is very different. We have it's called What's the Time, Mr. Wolf? And basically, all of the students talk to the wolf. They say, "What what time is it, Mr. Wolf?" And uh, he'll say, like, you know, three three o'clock, four o'clock, and that's how many steps you can take. And then after those four steps, the wolf will turn around and see if there's anyone moving. And then they ask him again, what's the time, Mr. Wolf? And then when you get that, when you get very, very close to him, uh, Mr. Wolf will say, you know, what's the time, Mr. Wolf? It's dinner time. And you have to run away then. Uh, any any of you guys, you know, and probably maybe Jonathan, is it the same in, in the States or you have a different version? 
Yeah, it's a, that's exactly right. Um, yeah, we we do that uh, just like that. Gotcha. I, Carlos, how about in Brazil? It, um, do you have a Mr. Wolf? But what's what's interesting is that like mm. we've got kids too, right? Mm. So my my kids immediately started riffing on it, like instead of dinner time, they started doing cheese time or hippo time or pizza time. And those all meant different things to mm. them, right? Like mm. the ludic approach sort of starts to build up cultures mm. incredibly quickly, right? And I think that's, that's what's really useful for classrooms, right? Even this, this like, traditional playground game immediately builds a culture, mm. like much quicker than, than a lot of other activities. It sounds like you're filtering, um, it's uh, De Coven's, um, you know, the well-played game there, the idea of, yeah, 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 exactly. Evolving play as it happens to keep it interesting, right? But in terms of <clears throat> comparing cultures, I mean, Carlos and uh, uh, Catherine, what, what, what's it like in, in your areas of the world? Do you have this squid game? What's the time, Mr. Wolf, or whatever you want to call it, Carlos? Oh, I think uh, here in Brazil, at least in Minas Gerais, where I'm from, mm. we have a statue that is like statue in okay. English. So it's the same basic idea. You have a song or something. If the kids play a song, hmm. and then when they say statue, everybody needs to stop hmm. and they need to stay on the same position. But they also are in encouraged not to be on easy positions. They need to make their moves and go, yeah. stand on one foot or something. So there's that. Love it. Yeah. How about you, Catherine? We have slightly modified version, so it's uh, called Sea Moving. So the game master says the sea moves one, sea moves two, sea moves three, and then he names the position or some role other players should take. And then he turns around, or he or she, mm. and then touches the player, and the player should mimic the movement of the figure they're trying to you know simulate interesting so, like, yeah who who gets the best you know role play there mm. look at this it's just incredible you know there we go we've took and then again we can just throw that back into squid game we can say well look well what is it in korea what what it, how is it being used in this movie we've just took a very simple playground game and we've just spent 10 minutes discussing it in in terms of you know different cultures different ways that it can be played remixed no, fantastic stuff. And I'm sure um, students would, would in, in, in enjoy and appreciate that as well. Um, so the idea then is for us to, as a team, all together, uh, looking at this document on page number 21. We're going to spend some time now, maybe you know, five, ten minutes, to write as many kind of playful activities, digital games, board games, mobile games, and yeah just fill in this this uh what's it called table together live is that okay guys is everybody on the document please look down at page 21 and please start filling it in all right yeah carcassonne here we go uh, just for the stream the other day i was doing a, a japanese lesson and um there we go. Elevator music, one hour. I'm just going to put this in the background while we fill this uh, table in. I know you guys can't hear it, but I can. Oh, Gartic phone. Great game. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'll make some. Oopsie. In fact, you don't even need the dot. Just right, guys. You're good. Sack race. Nice.
ESL space team, interesting. <coughs> Don't starve, okay. Mortal Kombat 11. We're up to 11 now on Mortal Kombat. Holy moly. So James, what's what is something like uh, geocaching, like an, mm -hmm. like an where you are trying to find treasure somewhere, mm. and or you're using your phone for like directions or clues, and you're trying to find uh, some some you know treasure or object hidden under a fence or in the woods somewhere. Mm. Like, is it is it play? Do you necessarily yeah like an escape do you, room? Do you necessarily have to have a mobile phone to do geocaching? No. Well, you need to get the clue from somewhere, right? It helps like, if you have a mobile, doesn't it? Well, otherwise it would be like orient orienteering, right? Like where you know where the the the, the place geographically is, and mm. you just need to get to it. There might be a treasure there. Yeah, I noticed that some of these um, don't part of it's the fit in neatly into yeah. a particular box. For example, this Gartic phone game, it, it actually it goes on mobile as well. So it's Yeah. Yeah. Like not neat. Arping. Like somebody somebody posted in the, the discussion yesterday about mm. Viking reenactments. Role playing mm. Vikings. Uh, yeah, or like Viking reenactments, which is just amazing. Like, watch that video. That's one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. Um, is that play, or is that something else? I, I really it's don't know. Rule-based right? play, no. So's life, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How how far yeah. does this red? It's interesting. Go? <laughs> I know, right? Like we're we're role playing. Uh, teachers right now, right? Mm. I, I'm, I'm... Yeah, ge <clears throat> geocaching was really fun. I did it with my students a couple months ago, and and they're still talking about it. Like you, you the, those are the really basic ways of playing. Discussions tend to go, keep going back to them, right? Mm. Like everything sort of leads back to that basic play idea. Yeah, I've uh, I've had students do some geocaching around campus as well. Um create little geocaches yeah. for them for their friends video record it as evidence that they did it and and submit it for a project but yeah cool all right um we've got a fair amount of stuff of bits here it kind of warms my heart to know that play has got the longest list <laughs> uh, anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna stop the elevator music six minutes that was plenty of time Goose game. Ah, goose game. Jeu de Louis or something. The, the game of the goose, I guess. Yeah. 
interesting. Dead of Winter, One Night Werewolf, Scrabble. Uh, okay. Right, so let's have a look at our um, our list that we've created here. So we have Dungeons and Dragons. I would put that into the board game list here, if that's okay. Taboo as well. I guess it's actually a, a game that you can purchase. So, but I mean, of course, it's play as well. You can make your own version, I guess. Uh, it, I put D and D there. Why? Why? Why are you? Why are you moving my D and D? Because it's a product that you buy. It's a board game. It's 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 yeah oh no i i also put minecraft parkour so that's got to move too hmm. when you say minecraft parkour you say the mini game inside minecraft where you do keeps jumping platforms yeah that's well i guess we don't really need these headings then if everything can just go in one box <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm only slightly joking. Is, well, is it, is it the well? That's the thing. Like that, this is what we're getting at. Is it the way of playing, mm. or is it the technology, or the way of of of, of uh, consuming the product? A lot of people will play Dungeons and Dragons just like theater of the mind, right? There you go. Technology versus attitude mm. or actions. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, we we. So let's just um, verbalize that more um, concretely then. We created some categories of, of different technologies um, here. For, so play meaning, I mean, I guess the idea behind play was just something that does not require a PC or a console, a uh, digital mobile device, or an actual physical purchasable board game was the, was the kind of idea in my mind. But as we've noticed by doing this activity, these lines are very blurred. Um, I mean, the Minecraft parkour. Okay, of course you need the digital or mobile version of Minecraft to actually play it, but it is play within that that world essentially. So, yeah, that's that's a great point. Is it does technology decide everything, or is it attitude? Well, I mean, I guess you need the technology even before you decide to do my, Minecraft parkour as well. So. It does, it does, um, what's the word? It does decide for you, I guess, uh, as a starting point. Uh, I mean, you could just go outside and play parkour. You don't have to do it in Minecraft, so. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of, it kind of makes me thinking of, like, same goes for treasure hunt, you know, tagging, you know, like, you can do it in a physical world, I can do it just outside my garden, but if I go into Minecraft and instead of doing what the game offers me, I just, you know, create kinds of play that is not actually, in, you know, like linked to the game. So mm. I would see it as a play as well, yeah. So I think there's, just, just listening to that again, it's play actually exists in all of these other areas as well. I mean, we've kind of created three subsets of technology whereas a play is not exclusive to technology less environments is, is that basically where we've come on this yeah okay I always think of minecraft as a kind of like this immersive environment you know of course, and then yeah. usually what i say is what is the difference between my classroom in my school and in minecraft the space itself and the resources available. When I think of that, I kind of like, I don't think of a game, but, I, you know, the environment. The stock market. Very yeah. different to, to look at. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I like how that kind of play permeates them all. It can be, it can be uh, brought about in all of these different areas. Yeah, fantastic. So we've uh, taken some ideas and basically what we're going to do is look at the various layers of interaction, language learning potential of these games and play. So this is a, a diagram that we created in our recent paper. And it's to try and look at, well, I'll, I'll read the title here again. 
save me having to think. <laughs> it is still 6.30 a.m. Uh, <laughs> it says, players use language at many different levels in and around games. Uh, teachers can also introduce and support, <clears throat> i.e. mediate, which is something that we looked at last week. What do teachers do to kind of bring about more learning around a playful activity? So teachers can also introduce and support students learning at all of these different le levels and different and within different activities. So here are some language features and linguistic activities used in, around and in so society related to games and play. That, that wasn't a very nice sentence, but essentially we're looking at three layers of game of uh, interacting with these activities here, any of these activities. OK, we can look at the language which exists within it, the language that uh, is the language that is generated or the language that emerges around interacting with the the core kind of play ludic activity itself. And then third, not only interacting with that playful activity, but spreading it out into uh, society and the e e ecological framing of the game. So. Let's have a look at, um, um, let's just, I'm just going to introduce these <clears throat> and then we'll look at these different layers through that. What's the time Mr. Wolf game that we just looked at, right? That was, that was probably a really good priming activity and I didn't plan that, but it's worked out pretty well. So, um, within the game. Okay. So think about what language exists within a game. Let's take, uh, for example, Dungeons and Dragons is a great example, not Dead of Winter, Dungeons and Dragons, where did I put it there? If you're thinking about Dungeons and Dragons, just the object itself, I need to see people. I can't, I can't just be talking to myself. Okay, I've got some, I've got some people now. Uh, still streaming this, okay, good. <clears throat> Dungeons and Dragons as a product is absolutely chock full chock a block as we might say in, in England it's full of language right you need to read a rule book which may be a hundred pages long the game the the product itself it is designed through language you know these games are designed through our human communication medium which is language so the game itself is full of language and for example, the dialogue in a game, if you're playing something like Mass Effect or an interactive fiction game on itch.io or I don't know, uh, even what's the time Mr. Wolf is a form of dialogue, right? So there's dialogue in the game. There's images in the game. There will be feedback. You interact with it. Something happens. You get some feedback, which again, from a, a cognitivist approach would be a recast or something like this, right? You're getting some in feedback from the game. In-game support, interaction with the characters, and then finally, you're having some fun. So there's things that are happening in the game, yeah? The game itself is a source of language. Just remember that. Second, around the game. So the game as product, the game as passive product giving you language is, is, um, is the first layer. Second layer, around the game. So what are you going to do before the game? What are you going to do after the game? Um, is there an instruction manual? Can you analyze your gameplay? Can you compare your play with native speakers? Okay. Uh, or sorry, that's a loaded term. I should say target language speakers. Are you going to do some debriefing sessions or create some, some reports? So the idea here is that, okay, the game exists. Dungeons and Dragons, you know, it's, it, it features specific language, but what actually happens when players play with that? Are they going to use the wrong vocabulary? Are they going to, go down a different path or, you know, it's, it's a language emerges through interaction with the game itself. Okay. Finally, the uh, third layer. So let's say the game in the classroom, interacting with the game or the play activity. And then we're going to look at it from, okay, so what's happening in the world? Let's go on Reddit and look at Dungeons and Dragons subreddit. Let's look at the, um, the social, um, issues surrounding things like Dungeons and Dragons because you know these Dungeons and Dragons games actually RPG games have come under scrutiny for being you know very sexist and uh, having a particular worldview that you know maybe is not 
PC nowadays. So, you know, that that's another layer of the game. It's like, well, let's actually analyze this Dungeons and Dragons. Like, why is this barbarian, you know, raping and pillaging? You know, is that is that OK? Like, you know, there's there's a there's a third layer of, of interaction that can happen with the game. Now. We've got this line here, this pedagogy. Now, it's supposed to be kind of going through all three layers here, right? So let's go down back to this within the game um, layer. So we're looking at Dungeons and Dragons. The students have kind of got it in their hands. They're, they're trying to read the, the rule book, the rule book, but they're not really paying much attention. Now, pedagogy here, right? We can say, as a teacher, we can say, okay, I want you to look at this page and I want you to underline every single verb that you find on this page, right? So pedagogy is helping the students interact with the within game uh, level uh, discourse and language to a more than perhaps they would themselves. So pedagogy is helping support further learning from the game itself. All right. Second, around the game. So, okay, you get students, you get here's Dungeons and Dragons, learn how to play it. We're going to play it in class. Done. Okay. But if we add, add some pedagogical scaffolding, if the teacher helps a little bit, you can say, OK, I actually just recorded you playing for five minutes. Let's look at it together and see where you made mistakes. Let's see where you can improve your language before and after playing. Okay, So again, here, pedagogy is supporting or scaffolding further learning around the gameplay. And I don't really need to say it, but again, pedagogy at the third level here, you can say, well, you know, maybe the students wouldn't even bother to look at the social issues around the game, right? They're, they're just, oh, yeah, that was fun. Then the teacher can step in and say, OK, now let's go on Reddit or let's go on uh, Board Game Geek and look at perhaps issues around um, Dungeons and Dragons version five, if that exists. I'm not a Dungeons and Dragons player, but so again, all, I'm, all we're trying to say here is that there are kind of three levels of uh, language and learning that's possible with a playful activity and pedagogy can mediate all of these levels to bring about further learning does that make sense and have i missed anything moderators language permeates everything from within the game around the game you know. yep so let's now look at that, at that concrete example that we did at the start of the of today's uh, session, which was, you know, totally orchestrated and I knew this was going to come up, but no. So <laughs> we talked about this idea of um, what's the time Mr. Wolf? OK, so within the game, what's the language within this game? Fairly simple. Can, can someone explain what language exists within this? What's the time Mr. Wolf game? I mean, from Carlos, from from the Brazilian perspective, what what language exists? You had this one word, which was, what was it? Uh, it was estátua, right? Statue. So it was a command. Mm -hmm. You need to you that uh, one child gives this command to all the others. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that when you receive this command, everybody stops. Right? There we go. So you've got at least one word in the game in Brazil. You've got the word for statue, which was estátua or something. Yeah. OK, so the, within the game itself, you've got that word. You've got perhaps any other words in the game or is that just the one word you think? Oh, no. Yeah, there is also some music. Some children, you can some children sing. Some others use uh, uh, pre-recorded sounds mm -hmm. like uh, other musics. But there is also music. So the idea is that you're, you're singing and dancing or something and right. then you stop on that moment. Gotcha. So maybe there's a, you can learn some some uh, Portuguese from singing the song itself. OK, so you've got a couple of things yeah. there. All right. Now, let's think about around the game. I'm going to stick with Carlos here. Look, when students actually play this game, do you think they're just going to be silent? No, they're going to be calling each other out. Right. They're going to be like you moved or I saw you or, or this kind of language is going to emerge through interacting with it. No, Carlos? Yeah, definitely. There is always that uh, instant feedback. Students say, oh, someone else has moved, They're not me. Uh, there is all this interaction during the game, right? During the game. That's right, yeah. And that's going to be happening, hopefully, in the target language. Or at least if we use this pedagogical scaffold, we can say, hey, guys, stop. You know, you were just saying 
you moved or all this, you know, let's look at how we can say that in, in Portuguese now, right? So there's some language around it. And then the third layer, you can say, huh, you know this game we've just been playing? Well, in America, they call it What's the Time, Mr. Wolf. In Russia, they have this kind of C game where, you know, the C moves the number of stops. Let's go and check out how they do it around the world. And let's figure out how to do that in Portuguese, right? So you've got this third layer of, of learning which can happen just around musical statues, uh, which is what uh, actually I think in uh, English, at least, we, we'd, we'd call this uh, musical statues, right? Yeah, we have the, a similar game. So, yeah, that one example uh, and how it could be used on different le le layers. Has anyone got any questions or other examples of, of things like this that they're interested in or anybody else have something to add before we look at uh, the next section of the slides here? All right. Brilliantly explain it. So keep I going. I don't know how. I'm barely awake, but. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you guys are my hero. Huh? Anyone wake up in very early or going to bed very late for this session are my heroes. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much. All right. So. Um, what is this all about mechanics? Okay. Okay. This is the next section that we're going to, to fill in actually. So we've looked at games or playful activities, ludic activities themselves. Um, we're going to look at specific mechanics within games now and think about what potential they have, uh, for teacher scaffolding, um, and how that can link to language learning. So. How can I do something with these different games for different learning goals? And we have some examples here. Roll dice and move a token, AKA um, snakes and ladders or Monopoly. It links to this SLA theory, this language teaching, this pedagogy, okay? So it's excitement, it's motivation, which has potential for LLP being, let's talk about what happened, debriefing and transfer. So after the game has finished, we can talk about what happened. Next, we've got the quick time event in games like, I don't know. What game has quick time event? You tell me. God of War, Final Fantasies, maybe? Yep. The idea here being um, it links to the input hypothesis. Okay, you have something coming at you. You have to respond as quickly as possible. And uh, so, for example, it says press the press left, and you press left, and then you respond. You get it right. You get feedback. You go on to the next uh, section of the game. So this links to well, why do some gamers like these and some gamers dislike them? Let's look at online. Let's look online and find out. So this is how you can scaffold that into further learning. Okay, we've got hidden roles, which exists in games like One Night Werewolf or Resistance Avalon, that, that kind of game, which uh, basically are information gap tasks, right? It's um, you have some hidden information and other people have different information. Uh, you can pull your ideas or your information together through communication and then find out what's going on. So it, it relates to SLA theory of being information gap task and the potential for, for language learning in LLP is that this is oral communication, persuasion, hypothesizing. And this list just keeps going on. Betting and wagering. Comprehensible input, uh, language use around probability, potential for, for conditionals. So what we've tried to do here is create not only the a list of games themselves but also the the mechanics the core mechanics that exist within them and hopefully we can add some more information here so let's try and work together 
I, can I ask a quick question, James? Yeah. So I, I just want to make sure that people are are seeing what we're trying to do here because we're really trying to break down what a game is and how it connects to uh, language teaching and language learning. And I think for for some people who are new to using games and language teaching, this sometimes is a little difficult to get one's head around. Um, really looking at the at the game and 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 the language. So I'm, I just want to make sure that everybody's doing okay. Does anybody have any questions? Does this make sense? People? Okay. That's wonderful. That's great. Wow. I'm thrilled. Okay. Cool. Thank you. That's it's all due to James's excellent explanation, right? So far. And and our brilliant participants. I'm not doing so well now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're doing great. Okay, so Dude. we have these uh, three at the bottom here, and we have some ideas here as well. So, for example, what's cooperation in terms of SLA theory, language teaching, pedagogy? How about modular boards? What's the idea about having a board that can be made in different ways? Variable player powers. So what's what kind of SLA theory or language teaching... Uh, approach does you know if, if your students have different powers within a team what 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 does that uh how does that affect learning what learning could be could be brought forth from that particular situation oh feel free to fill this in feel free to add add things and, and fill it in that's the, the the activity right now I'll get my elevator music back. Here we go. No wrong answers, by the way. This is a t this is a form of play. Fail hard. I'm trying to think of some more.
There's a few more at the bottom. I'm enjoying this. People have got some good ideas. Um, on the third box here, the potential for LLP. At the very top, maybe we should have made this a little bit more sal salient. But um, at the very top here, it, it's kind of what would a teacher say? If you can think of <coughs> the actual language that the teacher might say uh, in response to these particular things. Um, for example, the crafting items one here. It's, uh, you know, I just added... Um, let's go into let's go onto the game wiki and find out how to craft these items further. You know, so think of uh, what could a language teacher say in the classroom um, in response to these particular game mechanics in order to further learning. Cooperation, for example, you say, "Hey Timmy, stop hitting." <laughs> Cooperate. <laughs> the modular board idea and maybe people are not um not quite say not quite sure of what the modular board is i'm thinking of something like uh katan you know yeah okay a modular board is is a board that is different each time. Let's have a look. Modular board game, like Catan. Uh, yes, that's the, that's. The, oh wow, Scythe. Okay, so Scythe. Um, what else have we got here? What's this? This is. Oh, okay. This is. Um, turn the music off for a moment. If you're looking at my screen, this game is called um, Forbidden Desert. Uh, so might be a little bit small but essentially oh the thing itself is small each of these tiles um, if you think of the game like chess right uh, let's think well I don't need to show you the chess board the pieces always start on the same square right the board itself does not separate into individual squares and you can remake the chess set into a different shape it's an eight by eight grid yeah whereas some games like um, Forbidden Desert, Catan, uh, Dead of Winter, um, Dungeons and Dragons even. Um, you know, the, the pieces, the board itself is modular, which means that they can be put into a different arrangement each time. Okay, so the board itself is not fixed. It can be a different, uh, yeah, different arrangement each time, essentially. So based on that, if the board is modular, what are the affordances of that? What what what's the positives of that? Well, I, I wrote here at the top the the task repetition, because you can play the same game again, um, but the pieces will be in a different place, and so it's going to be new, which affords different interaction, different emergent gameplay uh, probably, and so. From there, you can say, okay, let, now let's play again with, 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 um, now that we've studied the language after playing, let's play again. The game's going to be new. You're going to have different roles and therefore, you know, new stuff will happen. Does that make sense? Okay. I can see people nodding. Cool. Uh, where are we at? Okay. How about a time limit? I mean, that's a very simple mechanic, right? You can increase or de as, a, as a teacher what would you say it's like now let's play on hardcore mode you know it's like uh you've, you've done it in five minutes now let's do it in three minutes to see if that language can come any quicker or again by adding a time limit you can force people to make mistakes if they're being too slow and they're not you know really working they're not kind of the, the, maybe the thinking too long maybe the overthinking how to play how to play a particular activity so you say okay you got one minute now you're just going to have to go for it and then you can kind of promote some fluency or something so the, the time limit even if it, if it exists yeah, there we go fluency yeah if the time limit exists in the game or not um, a teacher can kind of modify that to push certain kinds of language use yeah maybe they're maybe they're struggling to play in five minutes Maybe they're struggling to, struggling to play in five minutes. So you say, okay, I'm gonna, we're just going to take no time limit. Let's spend 15 minutes to play this game. We're going to analyze stuff as we go along. We're going to write things on the whiteboard. You know, so a time limit is a very uh, in, 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 interesting thing. We need to go faster. Yeah, we, we need to go faster. We need to go slower. 
victory points gamification i think victory points also point to um feedback as well right it's how well did you do were you able to use the language to uh, a, a, a satisfactory level in that you won the game right did you win the game because you spoke well because you you use the language well maybe so the victory points um are kind of a a feedback an indicator of having done well at the game having used the language well yeah turn taking again this is i think um one, one thing that we're missing here is um yes not only watching other player moves but listening it's a, it's a form of input as well right you're saying well during their their turn i'm actually listening I can then maybe appropriate that for myself and use it when I speak. So the idea of turn taking is um, a good opportunity to get both listening and and uh, speaking skills separate, rather than just being like ah. It's like something like um, space team, which someone mentioned. It's you know turn taking slows things down, allows people to to um, listen and and speak separately. So yeah. All right, we've got a lot more things added here. <laughs> <laughs> listening to I know who wrote this <laughs> Dehan I mean listening yeah listening to podcasts about your game it's it's it, that would be on the 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 third level here right the ecological framing of the game you could watch a, a an hour long video talking about the history of Afghanistan through the uh the lens of uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 I I don't know anybody that's done that so all right. Did anyone understand? <laughs> You're just writing. You're just writing your own things now, Jonathan. All right. Paying money to the bank. Okay. Right. Stop there. That's enough. So yeah, we've we've, we've thought about mechanics themselves now, and how they can be leveraged by a teacher towards further learning. Right. Okay. Looking good. Okay, now we're going to go on to um, our kind of final, I think, activity of the day. Yeah, of this uh, this particular section. So let me just get my Discord out so I can see people again. Chuck it over there so you're not on the stream. There we are. There. Oh, no, no, no. I've messed up here. I want that. No, I want that. No, I want that. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so. Next. This is a kind of an activity which encapsulates all that we've looked at just now. I'd like each member to choose a game. Think about the language use in and around it. How could you link it to language teaching? Okay. So we've introduced in the previous session, the MMM of teaching, which was, let's pop back to week two. The methods are, you know, the way and the why and the goal of what you're going to do. The materials are the things that you create in order to reach these goals. And the mediation is um, what the teacher actually does within the classroom before, during and after uh, the play. So we've looked at that. We've thought about teacher roles again, which was week two, activity two. Um, just we, we created a list of the different things that a teacher can do in the classroom. I mean, it's not an exhaustive list. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here, but of course, there's probably more things um, that you're aware of and that you do. Then we've thought about the various types of games and playful ludic activities that exist. Let's put it all together. And think about hypothetically at this point we're still thinking hypothetically um, i should mention that the the pen the the final activity of of the llp uh evo course is to having done all this work actually create some kind of lesson plan or a curriculum uh, around um what you've what you've learned in the course and then actually go and teach it in a class so the, hopefully finally uh, you'll create something for your own classroom. But at the moment, we're still kind of in the hypothetical land where we're, we're thinking about a particular game or a particular ludic activity and how 
it could actually be used as a teaching tool. So there's a few, a few things to help you here. We've got consider looking at this paper from Jonathan on 10 activities you can do around games. So Jonathan print, uh, published a, a very short uh, LLP playground piece on activities that can be done around gameplay. Okay, so maybe you teach with games, maybe you do this, wonderful. However, there are a bunch of other things that you, oops, I'm actually editing the document itself. A bunch of activities that you can do around gameplay. And he, he made a list of uh, activities here, which may be useful for you. You don't have to look at it right now, but, uh, oh yeah, for example, play it again. That's a good activity. Consider in the game, around the game, and inspired by the game, which is that, that square that we just had above. And here is an example based on the one game to rule them all paper uh, using Monopoly. So we've got this game, Monopoly. Okay, language in the game, language around the game, language inspired by the game. I'll, I'll just read through it So yeah, instead of skipping. So language in the game, Monopoly itself, you've got language on the board, you've got language on the chance cards, uh, you've got language used when taking an action. Okay, so um, I move to Park Lane. I'm going to buy Piccadilly or whatever the the uh, the places are called in your own country. I don't know the I don't know the UK one, and it's it's all London town, all London stuff. Uh, language around the game, rule book reading, record and analyze gameplay. So what are students saying while they interact with the game? Watch YouTube videos and visit Monopoly communities online. And finally, language inspired by the game. We can think about capitalism, monopolies, rent, society. Uh, ca compare and contrast different versions of Monopoly. Or you can even create a local version. Um, so you can say the the Ibaraki version, which is where I live, the Ibaraki version of, uh, of Monopoly. You know, what landmarks would you choose to be on the board? The Tokyo version of Monopoly. And maybe there probably is a Tokyo version, you know. Uh, what it, what exists on there so you can learn about the culture through the game itself so i'm going to get you to do this on your player worksheet which is the participant file in this folder we've got a bunch of people now look at that and once you've done it we, hopefully we, we're going to put it on on discord as well and there's a template here it says here is a template for Discord to copy. Uh, all you need to do is copy this. I'll show you how to do it. In fact, I'm going to make it right now. Oh, I got a message in mods. Sorry, I didn't have my notifications on. Uh, I'll make a new channel and it's going to be week three discussion. Yep. And what we're going to do here is we're going to introduce a game that we've thought of uh, in terms of the language in the game, around the game, and inspired by the game. So I know people are still... Can you actually see my Discord? Yes, you can. People are still not 100% on Discord. Uh, we can grab this. And this is already formatted so that it becomes bold and stuff. So we can copy this, throw it in here. Okay, and very important, uh, we can edit here. So we can say blah, 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 blah. And obviously you'd edit these, delete stuff, and then just hit enter. And it all it formats it for you nicely so that, you know, all those asterisks turn into bold text. So this would be your, um, the game that you uh, thought about and the language in, around, and inspired by the game. Just again, in case you're not quite that savvy on Discord here, you can press up on the keyboard and it allows you to edit the previous message. Okay, so that's just literally press, pressing up on the cursor keys. Or you can right click and do edit if you've made a mistake. Okay. Another thing that people um, perhaps don't know about on Discord is if you hold the shift key and press enter, you get a new line. Because people are like, I, I can't, how do I make a new line? So you can just hold shift and press enter to make a new line. Shift, enter, make a new line like this. Okay. So yeah, the nah, I'm going deep into disc. I don't really want to get too deep into it, but you can, you can bold things with two asterisks or you can just select 
and choose your formatting here as well. So there's different ways to do it. Um, in fact, I will just throw this in as code so that people can copy it and I'll edit this later, but yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's, that's the idea for this week's uh, activity. It was quite short actually. I thought it would be a bit longer. Um, perhaps add something afterwards, but yeah, essentially take a game or take a, take a playful activity, take the most crazy thing you can think of. Why not? Why not take a, uh, musical statues? Why not? Yeah. And just show that with pedagogy, with the teacher's, uh, support, uh, a lot of different learning can be um, brought out of the activity. Again, on your participant sheet, and then we're going to do it in Discord here as well. Moderators, have I missed anything? Perhaps I have because I have a message in the mods channel. <laughs> oh, you're doing great, it says. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't think we need to do this live. This can be a take a take home activity for people. So yeah, that, that's the session today. It's only an hour and seven minutes, but um, we looked at games, all the different kinds of games and playful activities. We thought about how a teacher can leverage them towards language learning. Then you have some homework to think about a particular game and show what can be learned through it. Does anyone want to share what they're thinking of at this point? Like, is anybody lost? Is anybody not sure which game they want to use or how they want to use it? If, if you're struggling for an idea, uh, now is the time that we could help you, you know, synchronously. Hello, this is a frosty me speaking. Oh, good, yeah. Can you hear? Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, because I've had problems with my connection and because the mechanics of games are new to me, could we just go over what we mean by mechanics? Sure. And whether this list is something that we can add to if we think of other mechanics? Yeah, Rose uh, or Catherine or Jonathan, I invite you to uh, to talk about this. Give my voice a break. Sure. Um, so by mechanics, we mean what does the player do in the game? Uh, mm -hmm. So even just thinking about something like tag, uh, mm -hmm. people are running around and trying to touch another player. That's That's a really simple mechanic. Or in a roll and move game, you're rolling dice, moving a piece, maybe counting, trying to get to the goal. Um, so those are some simple games. In Minecraft, there are probably dozens or hundreds of mechanics, right? Uh, mining, crafting, sharing, uh, fighting, exploring, mapping. Um, and so then I'd like you to think about the game that you want to use and what your students do in the game. Those are the mechanics in the game. And so then we're thinking about what language people use when playing the game and what language people are using around the game as well. We can play tag or we can play Minecraft, but we can also talk about tag or we can talk about Minecraft or find out how other, other people or other cultures play Minecraft or tag. Does that make sense? Mike's muted. Prosini's mic it, is muted. Yeah. It, yes, it does. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, so then that's a way of just, yeah, thinking about the game. Yeah. Go ahead, please, please. Go. So this table is about the game that we're going to choose, or is it about any game, the list of games that we've made? Oh, before? it can be any. Choose it can be any game but we like it's better to choose one game and try to think about the mechanics and the language just around one we we brainstormed a lot of different games but then the homework is just to think about one game language in the game 
around the game and inspired by the game. Okay. Yeah, e Efrosini, I, I would uh, suggest you perhaps using the the game that you introduced last week, which was the the the, uh, the house building game. Was it? I can't remember the name of it. Cottage Creator. Right? Yeah, so... Ah, you mean that? Oh, sure. Mm. Maybe you, if you want, something, if you want something that you're familiar uh, I, I'd with. Rather, uh, yes, I'd yes, I'd rather choose something that I can do with my learners. Sounds great. Yeah, okay. yeah. You know, that 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 would probably be something that's without technology or that's not online at least. Wonderful. Yeah. Beautiful. That, Beautiful. That, please, please. That's Which a... game are you thinking about, Efrosini? Which game do you want to use with your learners? Well, um, I haven't had time to to think about it basically, <laughs> but. Um, covered Spyfall in the first live session, session. Mm -hmm. and um, I checked out the the site and apparently it started as a card game. That's right, yeah. And then it became an online version. So right. I think there's potential for my creating my own cards to, mm -hmm. to adapt to all of my learners. And I'm thinking about young learners. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about low-level learners because mm. I feel that any of the games that we've been talking about are for adults that can produce language to talk about what's happening in the games right. or that can go over a video and correct themselves. And I don't think my, my young learners would relate to that. <laughs> they wouldn't enjoy that at all. Um, so I was thinking about creating my own cards narrowing down the number of possible locations yep. to location they know yes. that they have personal experience of and of course could talk about absolutely wonderful you know, like some yeah. i love it school mm. supermarket uh, playground maybe mm -hmm. the beach yeah sport facility yes maybe i'm going to work I love it I think you, you've already you've already decided your your capstone project your your end of uh, Evo. That's beautiful project. You, you, you think I have? I love it. <laughs> you think I have? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. This you know, is I, perfect. I, I posted a message on Discord, and well, I've had problems with my connections. I was without the internet for most of this week, so I don't know if it's been answered. Um, I thought that um... I, I I read in. Is it in, in, in your paper, James, that teachers are not playful people? <laughs> and I felt really ashamed huh. that a parent is not a playful person at all anymore. And thinking oh, about this. James, you're getting called out. I had, no, it's probably. I had, I had my memory to remember the games we used to play and mm. to remember the rules of games, uh... like those statues and your What's the Time Wolf. Yep. Uh, uh, I definitely need to play more. And I thought that we might create a team with um, newbies like me, with dummies, mm, um, agree on some time weekly where we could oh. just discover games. Um, get I'd love to. Play. Yeah, I would, lo I would love to play more. I, I think I posted, right? Yeah, if people, if people replied, yeah. With my learners who could go online, but I don't want to turn myself into ridicule. Mm, I need no. to get acquainted first, so I need to play it with people first. Honestly, Efrosini, your your approach is is perfect. It's it's you know taking something that exists, modifying it for your own learners. Um, I think you're going to have a wonderful project, and I can't wait to see. You you got to take photos if you make these these cards and stuff. We really need to see it and share it with the community. So. Yeah, you, you're definitely on the That's right the path. Actually, we can't we can't share photos of our learners and we can't share their work. No, 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 no. <laughs> just just show the, the the things that you make, the product that you make. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, okay. like um, years ago when I started, I I can relate to what Efrosin is saying because when I started in 2015, I was kind of like at that time, my early 40s. Yeah, yes. Early 40s, right? <laughs> I'm I don't good know. to know. <laughs> and, no, it wasn't. Yeah, early 40s. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is um, I remember always until that time, kind of like playing was something that my husband did with my kids, you know, like video game, whatever. And uh, once I really start kind of like going back to that place where I could feel 
okay, you know, to play, like take time to play, enjoy playing. That made the whole difference. And I remember in 2015, when I ran a project with my student, that's what I did actually. I was very happy to see what uh, I produced for them, what they produced. And I took pictures. I even have that in my blog because yep. I was so happy and proud of it. So, I, I mean, bad. whatever you come up with, yeah, make sure you register, you write about, you document it, you know, be proud about those little uh, steps that you're going to make towards it. Um, I, I even at the time wrote a blog post years ago, like uh, make peace with fun, <laughs> you know, because that was what I actually happened to me. I was so serious about everything and I kind of like um, got into this um, time where I'm okay now, not losing the pedagogical you know, view, but also allow me myself to, to really enjoy this process of creation as well. So yeah, go for it. I think he, I agree with everyone saying you, you really, you know, got into it. You have definitely a very nice project coming up. Definitely. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the plan. Think of a game, think of a, a playful activity, anything's fine. Uh, think about the language that exists in it, around it, and inspired by it, that you could, you know, uh, jumping off points for, for further activity. Write it on your worksheet, sh share it with us in the week three discussion channel, and uh, we'll catch up next week uh, where we're going to talk about, so we've, we've covered pedagogy, games, so language, yes. We're going to look at language next week. Uh, yeah. That's all from me. Mods. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, um, Efrazini, I, I did, I did, I did see your your message about wanting to play games. I was mm -hmm. waiting a few days for other people to react to the message because we're we're located in different time zones, um, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I was waiting, and a few people did thumbs up that message. Uh, and so I will post something today trying to set up another time. If you want to play Spyfall or play the game that you make, um, I, I would love to try if the time zones work for people to explore a few uh, easy to play games. Mm -hmm. So uh, nice. I, I apologize for my delay on replying to your message. I was just waiting to see if other people also wanted to join. So I was off Discord, so I couldn't. I would have missed it anyway, so I don't need to. Post. You're fine. So I'm glad that we could talk right now, and then I'll I'll make sure to uh, follow up on that. So I, I do want to help. Thank you. Of course. Okay, ending the stream. Thanks, guys.